Hey everybody, it is Mrs. Lucas again here to talk to you about Target 4.2 Day 2, which is going to continu continue with our factoring. But today we are going to factor when we have an A value other than 1. So we want to solve AX squared plus BX plus C equals 0 by factoring. So the first thing that we always want to do when we factor is we want to make sure to factor out the greatest common factor when there is one. And so between these terms, 5, negative 17, and 6, there are no common factors other than 1. So we are not going to take out a greatest common factor. So what we want to do then is we want to multiply our A term times our C term. So our A term is 5 and our C term is 6. And we're going to go ahead and multiply 5 times 6 and we get 30 when we multiply, multiply 5 times 6. Okay, so we want to figure out what factors of 30 add up to be negative 17, the B value. So what two numbers add up to equal negative 17? So you can make a little list here. So you could do like 30 and 1. Well, that doesn't work because they need to add to be a negative number. But negative 30 and negative 1 also don't work. Negative 15 and negative 2, however, do work. So it would be negative 15 and negative 2 will be what we are going to replace the negative 17 with. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite our original trinomial into four terms. We want to take it and rewrite it as 5x squared. And we want to replace 17, negative 17x with negative 15x and negative 2 x. So it'll be 5x squared minus 15x minus 2x plus 6. So from here we are going to do what we call factor by grouping. So we're going to group together the first two terms and we are going to group together the second two terms. And we're going to go ahead and take out the greatest common factor from each pair of terms. So the greatest common factor between 5x squared and negative 15x is 5x. So you're going to take out a 5x, factor it out, and write down what you have left. Well, 5 divided by 5 is 1, and x squared divided by x is just x. Then negative 15 divided by 5 is negative 3, and x divided by x is just 1. Then we want to look at the second pair of terms, negative 2x plus 6. We want to take out a negative 2. And the reason we want to always take out a negative 2 is because we want the second binomial to match the first one. So if our first binomial was x minus 3, we have to take out a negative 2 so that we're still left with x minus 3. Because negative 2 divided by negative 2 is just going to be x. 6 divided by negative 2 is going to be negative 3. So then, factor by grouping means that we're going to take 5x minus 2 and we're going to combine them into a binomial together. So 5x minus 2. And then our second binomial is just going to be x minus 3. And the reason we can group those together is because essentially 5x was just being distributed to x minus 3. And negative 2 was just being distributed to x minus 3. And so we're just combining those together. And then a quick way to check would, of course, be to multiply it back out and make sure that it does multiply out correctly. So our final answer is 5x minus 2 times the quantity x minus 3. All right, so let's do another example of factoring. So this time we've got 3x squared plus 20x minus 7. And once again, we have no greatest common factor between these three terms. So we are going to multiply the first term times the last term to get 3 times negative 7, which is negative 21. 
So we want to find factors of negative 21 that add up to be our B value, which is positive 20. Well, negative 21 means that 1 is positive and 1 is negative. So a positive could be positive 21 and negative 1. And then that would work because those two do actually add up to be positive 20. So positive 21x and negative 1x will replace 20x in our trinomial. So we'll get 3x squared plus 21x minus 1x minus 7. So what we want to do is we want to group together the first two terms, group together the second two terms. The greatest common factor between 3x squared and 21x is going to be 3x. And then when we divide a 3x out of each of these, we are just going to be left with x plus 7. Then the greatest common factor between negative 1x and negative 7 is just negative 1. And we will be left with, dividing out negative 1 from each of those, just x plus 7 also. So your second binomial should always match, and they do. They both are x plus 7, so we combine 3x minus 1 together into be our first binomial. So it would be 3x minus 1 times x plus 7, and that is the factored form of this trinomial. All right, so the next set of examples is going through our special patterns when, once again, A is something other than 1. So if A is something other than 1 and you're looking for any special patterns, you're still looking for the same type of pattern. So in letter A, for example, a difference of squares. So 9x squared is 3x quantity squared. and 64 is 8 squared. So this one would end up being 3x plus 8 times 3x minus 8 in factored form. So next, for our next example, we've got uh, 4y squared plus 20y plus 25. And so we want to check that 2y squared and 25, which is 5 squared, that 2y times 5 times 2 gives you that middle term. So remember, it should be 2ab, or 2ac, sorry. So it would be 2 times 2 times 5y, which is 20y. Okay, so that one does end up working out. And so since it's positive 20y, it's just going to be 2y plus 5 quantity squared in factored form. Then the last one is, once again, the a and c terms are perfect squares. It's 6w quantity squared and 1 squared. So is negative 12 going to be 2 times 1 times 6w. And it is, except for it's negative 2 times 1 times 6w, which means that when you have this one in the parentheses, it's going to be subtraction. It's going to be 6w minus 1 quantity squared. So the last set of examples here, for example 4, is when we do need to factor out the greatest common monomial. So in letter A, we've got 5x squared minus 45, and a common factor that these have is positive 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor a 5 out of each of these, and so we end up with 5 times x squared minus all right, so this next set of examples is going to take a little bit of room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do each one and then erase it. So um, for example A here, 
5x squared minus 45, we want to check out factoring out the greatest common factor, which is always a monomial first. So we are going to factor out a 5 here because we can factor a 5 out of both 5x squared and negative 45. And we're left with just x squared minus 9. We divide 45 divided by 5 to get 9. So then we want to see, can we factor x squared minus 9? And we can. It is a difference of two squares. It is x squared minus 3 squared. And so that pattern is going to be 5 times the quantity x plus 3 times the quantity x minus 3. Squeezing that in there a little bit. So that is the first example. Now for our next example, B, we've got 6Q squared minus 14Q plus 8. And we can factor out a greatest common factor. It is 2 for this one. And so we take the 2 out of each term and we write what we have left, which is 3Q squared minus 7Q plus 4. And then we want to factor this trinomial, 3q squared minus 7q plus 4, by multiplying a times c again. So our a times c, 3 times 4 is 12. And so we want to figure out what factors multiply to be 12. And when we add them together, we get our b value, which in this case is negative 7. And so what it should be here is negative 4 and negative 3. We want to factor this trinomial, and we want to replace negative 7q with negative 4q and negative 3q. So we get 3q squared minus 3q minus 4q plus 4. So we do factor by grouping, which means, of course, we want to factor the greatest common factor out of the first two terms, which is 3q, and we're left with q minus 1. Then for our second pair of terms, we want to factor out a negative 1, or a negative 4, I'm sorry. And we want to factor out the negative 4 because we are leading with the negative 4 here. So we factor out negative 4, and so we will be left with positive q. And when we divide 4 divided by negative 4, we'll get negative 1. So our binomials do match, so we want to combine 3q minus 4 to be our first binomial, and q minus 1 to be our second binomial. And we can't forget about that, too, that we factored out at the beginning. So our final answer is 2 times the quantity 3q minus 4 times quantity q minus 1. For our next one, we have, for example, c here, negative 5z squared plus 20z. And we really don't want to ever lead with a negative coefficient. And so in this case, that negative coefficient would be negative 5. We always want to get rid of the negative coefficient when possible. So we want to divide out the negative 5 from each of these because they are both divisible by 5. 5 is a factor. So we factor out a negative 5, but that's not the only thing we can factor out. They also both have a z term. And so we can go ahead and factor out negative 5z from each of these. So negative 5z times, well, negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1, and z squared divided by z is just z. And then 20 divided by negative 5 would be negative 4, and z divided by z is 1. And so, negative 5z times the quantity z minus 4. From here, we want to check out, can we factor z minus 4? And we can't. It is not a difference of squares. And so, if it's not a difference of squares with two terms, we are done. 
And finally, our last example here is 12p squared minus 21p plus 3. So let's go ahead and factor out a 3 from all three of these terms. We're left with 3 times the quantity, 4p squared minus 7p plus 1. And so once again here, we're going to factor the trinomial still left within the parentheses. So 4 times 1 is 4, and so what factors of 4 are going to add up to be negative 7? In this case, there are no factors of positive 4 that are going to add up to be negative 7, so this factoring out the 3 is the most that we can do. So, tomorrow in class, we are going to do some more practice talking about factoring trinomials when we do have A that is something other than 1.